Segment 3 of the Breckenridge Design Project will be addressing building the floor plan for the garage and foundation, placing the garage doors, and then placing the interior stairs. The exterior stairs will be placed during the terrain project, and then the eye joists will be placed during our framing segment. To create the foundation under the build menu, you'll find a build foundation option. When you select this, you can choose an, a number of attributes in here. My slab thickness is 4. My default's already at 110 and 7 eighths for my stem wall height. That gives me a ceiling height of 106 because my slab thickness will sit on top of that. I'm going to accept the rest of the defaults and then I'm going to let the program derive that foundation from the plan first floor. Select OK and then that generates our foundation. Now notice that my flooring material in my defaults apparently was set to be some sort of a hardwood so I'm just going to simply highlight the room, double click to open it, and in my floor finish I'm just going to go ahead and open that up and press delete so it's just a concrete slab in there. Now that that's updated you'll notice that our floor plan created a wall segment in here and if you go up to the floor above you can actually see that that wall segment is going through here and then it ends over here and in your floor plan view it's a little bit easier to see because I've used a invisible wall to give me room definition between the kitchen and the living room so inside of our foundation that wall segment has created a partial wall which is okay because we're going to make several changes to this foundation and actually broaden it beyond the floor above. In the floor plan set of the foundation, if I use the tool called Reference Display Set and toggle that on with my menu off to the far right here, you can see the floor above, which gives me an idea of where I want to move this foundation. This outer red line represents our patio, and I want my deck to be right over the top of my garage. So I'm going to select this foundation wall and I'm going to pull it over the deck and I'm going to grab this one and pull it over the deck as well. Now in the 3D view, if I toggle on my vector camera here, you'll notice that there's a notch right here and the difference with that notch is my floor platform in the main house is consisting of an engineered floor truss. It's about 21 inches in thickness and this area over here is the patio if we go up a level and that patio is actually a six inch pan deck construction so you'll notice that there's a step in that area and the program automatically is able to understand that wall height for us in the foundation off to the left I want this area to be my garage and off to the right I want to use that as a crawl space and then back in this area is going to be the stairwell and stairway that goes up to the main floor. To create that stairwell and that crawl space, I'm just going to pull this wall over by clicking on that diamond. And I'm going to grab this stair by pressing the tab key and just pull that over and so that it may matches up. Sometimes it's easier to do that in your floor plan view. Toggle off my reference display set. We'll connect those two walls and I'll pull that back just a little bit. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and pull that wall all the way across. And now with the room definition, I'm going to open up this room. And I'm going to define that as a crawl space. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to set my wall to have a stem wall of 37 and 7 eighths. And in my floor structure, I want to see this in 3D. Currently, there's a slab in there. There's no reason for that to be a slab. But I want to show, when I do my 3D views, I want to show a dirt area in there. So I'm going to change the concrete out, and I'm just going to type in and search for dirt. So we'll open that up in the library. We'll go ahead and then we'll find that material. Select that. Select OK. And go ahead and close that. I'm going to do the same thing over here. In this case, I'm going to use the object eyedropper, click, pick up the components of this room, and apply it to that room. Now, when I open up this room, it should have the exact same stem wall height 
and then the material should also have that dirt. So it saves me a couple of steps. As I toggle back to the 3D view, you can see the crawl space is now elevated. There is a brown material. If I change my camera back to the standard color, then you'll see the, uh, the dirt texture in here. Next, I want to select the walls on the bearing side of that crawl space, and I want to change that to have an insulated, rigid insulation on that. And it's easiest to do that in the floor plan view. If I zoom in here, first of all, this wall right in here, I'm going to create a break using my wall break tool. I come in here and create a break. So now I can select the different wall segments, and I'm just going to hold my shift key down on the wall segments that I want. And actually, let me create one more break in here because I do not need an insulated wall in this segment through there and one more break up in here. I'm going to highlight the walls that I want to change and one more scroll down. Now that I have all of the walls selected I'm going to double click to open them up and on my wall types I'm going to change that from the 8 inch stem wall to the 8 inch foam wall and if you take a look at the properties what I have in here is I have a 2 inch rigid insulation factor that will go on the inside to provide a little bit of insulation factor in that crawl space. Close that and again back into the 3D view you can see that uh, there is that insulation on the wall. Next we want to change a few more of the wall types so that we have a furred framing wall on the inside of that garage because we want a nice sheetrock finish inside of that. As I rotate the design around, the wall that's facing us on this concrete wall, the terrain when we build it is going to be sloping down to form a uh, daylight garage. And so on this segment of the wall, I want part of the siding to be showing as that slopes away from the terrain. I'm going to open that wall up. I'm going to define it as a pony wall. And on the top section of the wall, let's choose our exterior type wall as an exterior siding 6 brown. And then on the lower segment of the wall, I'm going to change that to a concrete wall with sheetrock. And again, these are wall types that either ship with the program or it's very easy to build. You'll notice that my concrete is 8 inches. I have an air gap of 1 inch, 2 by 4 framing at 3 and a half, and then drywall at a half inch. So my total thickness on that wall is 13 inches. Select OK. And the default is just a half split wall. And what I can do is go into an elevation view and actually adjust that. It's easier to do it in elevation view. So let's go ahead and open up that camera by coming over here and let's take a back clipped cross section just through that wall so we can make the modification. In this section view, if I select the wall, first of all if I click on it, notice in the lower left hand corner it says exterior room. Press the tab key and then it will say polyline produced by the 3D wall. That's what I'm actually after and I'm going to press the break key right here where that diamond is. I press number three on the keyboard and you notice that I get a diamond placed right there. That diamond can be pulled around here a little bit so let me make an adjustment. Simply click on it and I'm just going to pull it over a little ways. Now on this handle I'm just going to pull this one up to the top of the deck platform and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up this segment right here so I get the slope on the siding and you can see how it's now following, will follow the terrain when we add that terrain. Returning to the perspective 3D view, rotate around, you can see that the sheetrock has now followed this layer and I've got an upper level of sheetrock and framing on the area that we broke because there are two different wall types there. Now on the remaining wall types, let me go back into my floor plan view here. I would make the same change on this exterior wall if I wanted some of the siding to show on that one. But for the purpose of the video, I'm going to select that wall and a handful of these other walls. 
and I'm going to make these walls make a change to those so that the wall type is a concrete wall with sheetrock so it'll be finished on the inside of those walls and again the wall type layer is a total of 13 inches with those layers in there close that and these two walls I'm going to select and I'm actually going to use this tool called reverse layers click that that will then place that sheetrock on the outside back into the 3D view and now you can see where that sheetrock is on the outside of the concrete wall looks like this wall segment down here in the corner I'm going to open that up and make that same change so that it is a concrete wall with sheetrock now it will match the other walls and I may have to switch that wall around let's go ahead down here and we'll use that same tool and switch that wall around now when I switch those walls around it actually relocated it so let me use the snap indicator and we'll just line that up with that wall and we'll check it up here looks okay now on this wall over here remember that's the pony wall on the uh, outside of the house and what it's doing is it's displaying that framed wall in my plan view you can control that if you open up the wall on the wall types panel display in plan view you can select lower wall and then that will show the lower wall one more item about controlling the way your walls look if I fill my screen using F6 on the keyboard and you zoom around and you discover one of your corners isn't quite what you expect in your plan view you can select the wall and there is a tool in the lower menu system called edit wall layer intersections if you select that you're gonna get the wall handles and it might take you a little bit of time to get these back but I'm just gonna kinda of pull these around and snap them into place until it gets cleaned up and I may actually have to click on the other wall to get those items cleaned up as well. I'm just gonna pull these back until I've got about what I want. Pull this one back in here. And now I've got most of it cleaned up with the exception of that sheetrock layer. So one more time, we'll come in here, pull that sheetrock layer back. And for the most part, I've got it cleaned up the way I want it. Let me press F6 on the keyboard here to fill the screen. In the area for the stairwell, I'm going to use a dimension tool and I'm going to use an end-to-end -end dimension, place a dimension, and then I'm going to use my interior dimension tool, I'll zoom in here a little bit more, and I'm going to place, it, place an interior dimension. It's not quite where I want that interior dimension because I actually want it on inside of the sheetrock, so I'm just going to use the diamond and pull that back, select this wall, and I want to move that so that we have about six foot two, which should give us four foot space for the stairwell going up. Scroll over and I'm going to draw a couple more walls for storage and mechanical using the interior wall tool. I'm just going to come in here, drag out a wall this way, select the diamond, pull it up until we get our snap, and then I'll use the diamond and pull that over and snap that into place. Zoom in here just a little bit looks like I'm off so we'll just pull that up till it's aligned and then one more wall and in this case I'm going to change my wall default from an interior 4 to an interior 6 for that wall that will form our doorway and we'll just drag that over and I'll just pull that up and position and actually since that wall is going to be going up to our main floor. I'm going to change that wall type to an insulated six wall. And again, the hatch pattern will show up a little bit differently. Next, I'm going to place the garage doors and then we'll go in and place our interior stairs. You select the room for the garage, double click to open it. I'm going to change and label that to be a garage. I might also do the same for the other rooms for crawl space, mechanical room, stairwell, etc. And now I'm going to zoom in and place our garage doors in this area using the garage door tool. Find our garage door and I'm just going to click and place one of the garage doors. For this garage door, let me open it 
Control E here. And I'm going to change the door style. And I'm going to go into the library. I've created a custom door style for myself. Again, that's in my user catalog under this project name called Breckenridge. I have a folder called Garage Stuff. I'm going to change my door style to the panel garage door. And remember, you can use the core catalogs for garage styles or bonus catalogs and you'll find a lot of new content to create different unique looks and accessories for your designs. Select that style and then I'm going to change the width of this door and the height. And I'm going to set the height of that to 90 inches here. And select OK. And then using my manual dimension tool, let me just come in here and I'm going to create a dimension for that door. And in this case, I'm going to place that door exactly um, one foot, three inches, and three quarters. Select OK. In a 3D view, if you take a look at this door before I copy it, I want to take and make that door the same color as the casing above. And we can determine the color of that casing. Let's just click on it and we can see that it's this color AF170 and we can just kind of use our material eyedropper pick that up and apply that on to the object so that it paints it on there and then when we do our copying it will include that on the other elements. Now I'll select the garage door, use the copy, reflect about the center of the garage place a copy of that door on the other side and then in the plan view I'll grab a copy of that door and we'll just slide that over so that it's approximately centered and I'll just verify that with the center tool inside the garage. I notice since I don't have any interior casing I can see through that edge a little bit of Z fighting so I'm going to open up all three of those garage doors on the casing, I'm going to actually mark that that has a casing on the interior of the garage and I'm going to use a two inch casing on the exterior and there are garage doors. To place this set of stairs in the stairwell that we've defined out, I'm going to tile my windows and you can see the 3D view over here. And in the plan view, I'm going to choose my stair tool. I'm just going to click on the wall here, click and place the stairs. We'll zoom in here a little bit and I'm just going to stretch these back and open them up and spell out some attributes in here. First of all, on the length and the width, I want to make that 198 inches, which is the exact same length as the stairs that are above it between platforms 1 and 2. On the width, we'll make that 48 to fill the cavity. And then on the newels and balusters, we'll move the railing on the right and left. Notice I still have balusters on the left and sometimes when you have a set of stairs going up and the floor platform changes, sometimes um, it won't get rid of those balusters so I'll just zero those out. You can get the preview update of those and I think that's it on that. And I may need to reposition the stairs and they actually look pretty good. Now in the 3D view, if you go up to the main floor, the next step is to create our stairwell and you can see that right now those stairs are buried in the floor. To generate that automatic stairwell I've selected the stair and in the lower menu edit bar there's an automatic stairwell. Once I select that it's going to generate a stairwell and it's going to place railings. To correct that let's go up to the first floor and let's go ahead and turn our stairs off that layer temporarily just so we can get in there and see the walls that are underneath the stairs. Now that that's turned off I'm going to select the wall and I'm just going to pull that up a little ways and then since I don't need a railing right underneath that stairwell I'm going to take that wall type and there's actually a door in it because it was coming up. I'll just delete that. I'm going to select that wall type and I'm going to toggle that to be an invisible wall so that there's no need for that. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is if we rotate around the outside here 
the patio comes in and there's a step change and it may be easier to see but that step change has a floor truss coming in here and rather than that floor truss going to the outside and below the patio I'm going to have my floor trusses go the other way so I'm going to correct this area right in here using an elevation view although it may be possible to get it in this view but it will be more difficult so I'm just going to do an elevation view here take a cross-section camera drag it right through that wall maximize that view and I'll select the wall press the tab key to get it and there's actually two wall segments in here because of that railing wall that we later made invisible I'm just gonna pull that over and snap that over here and get rid of that break and then I'll just pull that right up to the porch slab and then back into our floor plan view you can see that we've now corrected that and you can no longer see that through that area now one of the things that I'll do if you zoom in here a little bit you'll see the top of the wall the concrete wall and the furred framing wall is I'll use a polyline solid and draw on top of that and I'll show you that real quickly in the next segment in the floor plan view I'm going to select the polyline solid tool and I'm just going to come in here and drag out a polyline solid and I'll set that width to about seven inches and then the thickness of it let me try three and seven eighths select OK and pull that back just a little bit in this area right in here let's see what we have in a 3D view use my material eyedropper here apply that and then I'm just gonna basically copy that in place using the copy and place tool it's gonna create an exact copy of it then I'm gonna open that up and I'm just gonna change the thickness of that to the hardwood and then change the uh, floor to bottom actually that updated for me and then use the material eyedropper here and apply it and I probably need to actually set that to zero let me open that up and set that to zero instead of seven eighths here we go and it looks like I've got those two backwards so we'll just take that material and apply it to the bottom and then take this material over here and apply it to the top so that's how I solve the wall thickness I do the same thing with the uh, the molding in here um, I could create a room molding or just take an elevation view and draw that in myself. Well, that will conclude the garage and foundation plan. As we've gone through the process in the foundation, we've created different wall thicknesses and types, placed our garage doors, our stair platform up, and adjusted some of the walls to handle that as well as our stairwell. And it also wraps up the floor plan section. Previous videos created our main floor and our second floor. In the next segment, we'll explore our roof and roof options. Nee.